the 13th of September, Masa was arrested by the religious police in Tehran. She was visiting some relatives. And only in a few hours in, she, in their custody, she ended up in a coma and eventually died in hospital. Her death directly led to protests in Tehran and eventually spread to her home province of Kurdistan. And within less than a week, these protests had spread to the entire country, to every major city, 140 of them, and now is spreading to villages and towns. In this mass movement, led by the youth, which is, uh, the women are at the forefront, taking off their headscarves, burning them. But it's not only women uh, in the struggle, uh, but also men, young men, uh, including students and young uh, workers. And the dominant slogans, exactly as I was introduced, are death, death to the dictator, but also different variations, death, death to the Islamic Republic, and so forth, and so forth. But also emphasizing the class unity across all ethnic lines, slogans such as the whole of Iran is covered in blood, and in the last two weeks, the following slogan has become growingly popular. Do not call it a protest, call it a revolution. And in the working class industrial neighborhood of uh, Tehran called Karaj, the working class youths have put forward the slogan, rue the day we will be armed, threatening the regime. The dominant slogan of the movement uh, has been unified around the slogan, uh, women, life and freedom, a Kurdish uh, slogan, which has now been popularized. The regime has answered through brutal repression. The official figure of confirmed uh, dead is 240, but the real figure is much higher. In a single uh, day, the regime killed 96 protesters in the city of Zahedan a few weeks ago. Um, the confirmed number of arrest, uh, arrested and imprisoned are 10,000 students and trade union activists, which the regime has gone after, fearing the, the, the working class's participation in this movement. But the repression of the regime has only whipped up further and further anger among the masses and a more resoluteness among the masses to overthrow this rotten regime. In the first two weeks, nearly an insurrectionary mood developed among the youth. Um, uh, uh, occupying and setting ablaze official buildings, such as the Friday Imam offices, basically the bishop's offices of each town. If you make oh. uh, but even going so far, uh, attacking the governor's offices, burning them in the provinces, and even the barracks and headquarters of the security forces. And many times in this movement, the security forces have been overwhelmed and forced to evacuate certain sections of the bigger town, uh, bigger cities, and complete towns and villages overwhelmed by the masses. But it has become growingly clear to the youth since the, uh, since the end of September that these insurrectionary methods, these open, uh, honestly, uh, street battles against the security forces has led to nothing but martyred dead and imprison uh, imprisonment. And instead have gone forward for a more organized form of struggle, calling for university strikes, mass rallies at the universities. And uh, 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 from the beginning of this movement, uh, this university strike movement, it went from but two days, it went to 100 universities who joined uh, in strike. This was eventually repressed by the regime, with the regime uh, shutting down 40 universities and putting them under uh, occupation by the security forces. But this whipped up a new layer and, uh, to join the movement. Suddenly, school students, middle school students, went out into the streets shouting death, death to dictators. And the regime has again answered with repression. At least 46 children have been murdered by the regime. And right now, as I speak, there seems to be another peak developing with protests again rejuvenated at the universities, uh, beginning uh, at a larger and larger scale. Already, many militant trade unions have threatened a general strike. And there are now waves of bazaar strikes uh, and a few industrial strikes on polit politically supporting the movement. But these strikes are met with harsh repression uh, as they remain uh, largely isolated. This is an unprecedented movement in the history of the Islamic Republic. It has never met with an uprising at this scale, which is so widespread, and the threat of a general strike. And honestly has the potential to turn into, rapidly into a revolution. But we can ask ourselves, why now? Why the murder of Masa could unleash such a massive social upheaval? Masa's murder isn't unique. 
Tens of thousands of Iranian women are arrested by the morality police each year, <laughs> raped, killed, and brutalized. But it was because of the conditions prior to this, where the, all the conditions were ripe, and it was inevitable that an uprising would break out. Since 2018, Iran has been going through a period of intensive class struggle without precedent in the history of the Islamic Republic. Every section of society has either been on strike and or protest, from industrial workers, nurses, doctors, farmers, bazaaris. Since 2018, in this constant wave of strikes, there have been an average 100 to 200 strikes a month, spontaneously spreading from one corner to the country to another. And many of these uh, protests and strikes uh, reached the point to a boiling point in forms of a series of uprisings. The 2018 uprising began this period of intensive, uh, 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 intensive class struggle and was violently put down by the regime. 2019, there was an additional uprising, but this one was cut across by the threats of Donald Trump, uh, which uh, made the Iranian masses rally behind the regime in fear of um, uh, the intervention of the imperialists. And even, but even after that, have we seen a series of localized uprisings in the oil-rich province of Khurzestan uh, and in Isfahan? Uh, which were, had enormous potential of turning into another national uprising, but were, but were cut across by the repression of the regime. But even in the months prior to this uprising, there were signs that inevitably something was brewing. The regime had, has done enormous cuts against subsidies, which, were, which led to growing economic protests, which in many cases were, in some regions, were looking like it was going to develop in, uh, into an uprising. In June, uh, in the province of Khurzestan, in the city of Abedan, a massive tower, a vanity project of the Iranian ruling class, collapsed uh, because of the innate corruption in the, uh, uh, within the regime. And this led to nearly the development of an uprising in the province, but this was violently uh, repressed, uh, repressed by the regime. All these were just the prelude to the current movement. All the conditions were ripe for, the, uh, for a social explosion on the scale we're seeing right now. Uh, and Martha's death was the spark for precisely this movement. Uh, and behind all of these mass movements since 2018 is the horrors of Iranian capitalism. On the bourgeois media, they focus on the repressive nature of the regime, which is completely true. There, there are no democratic rights to speak of. Um, but there is much, uh, much more than that. The purpose, for example, of the religious p police is much more than simply to uphold uh, religious values. And the truth is, the Islamic Republic are the biggest hypocrites in the world. Uh, prior to this, there was a in uh, this, uh, oh, prior to this movement, there was an Instagram channel called the Rich Kids of Tehran, uh, and you would see uh, pictures which will, which are akin to the imperialists, uh, the ruling class of the Western countries, them traveling across the world, uh, showing a life of love. Luxury. They are complete hypocrites. They are uh, lacking any form of piety they, uh, they believe they have. The purpose of the religious police is rather to instill fear among the population, to, uh, to make the masses never think of ever uh, lifting a finger against the regime. But this has completely backfired because the masses see the reality. They see the enormous hypocrisy of the regime, how they use religion to enrich themselves. Because the reality is the Islamic, the ruling class of the Islamic Republic, uh, are the, uh, Iran has the 14th most dollar millionaires in the world because they have constantly uh, increased the exploitation of the Iranian working class with the overwhelming uh, pop, uh, Iranian population living in poverty. And based on the period of class struggle prior to this, many trade unions have, exactly as I mentioned, come out to threaten a general strike. Among them are the following. The truck drivers of Kurdistan and Elam, they actually already ha have gone on sporadic strikes in support of the movement. The councils for organizing the protests of oil contract workers, casualized oil workers. Prior to this, they had uh, organized two national oil worker strikes since 2018 and actually have begun uh, an isolated strike in one province, in the province of Bushir, uh, among, as well as the Teachers Coordinating Committee, which is to begin strikes tomorrow and on Monday, uh, and the half tape Workers, uh, a sugar plantation uh, union, uh, which, uh, which is ex honestly nearly a revolutionary program, I will get back to them, but also the, the Tehran bus, work, uh, bus company workers who are openly calling for the coordination of a national struggle against the regime. But the truth is, there are no workers uh, in the street for the large part. 
the, the, the youth are mainly alone, aside from some teachers have joined the movement, some uh, have most half tape workers and oil workers have joined the movement. But the, the, street, the street clashes we're seeing, they're overwhelmingly the youth. Um, and the reason is that these trade unions are scared. They're scared if they go on strike now, they will be isolated. The regime would violently repress them, as they have previously. The regime has violently oppressed, for example, the teachers the trade union when they threatened to go on strike uh, in January. Basically, all their leaders have been in and out from prison for the last six months and are under con constant surveillance. They understand to call for, if they would call for a strike right now, and it would only be them, they would be yeah, defeated rather rapidly. And this is precisely what we've seen with uh, the oil workers strike, which in the province of Bushir, which began last week. Uh, it, uh, this, the, the, the oil workers in, uh, in this province work at the biggest petrochemical plant in the world, uh, a massive complex uh, with an area of many square kilometers. But how has the regime responded? They turned off the internet, they surrounded the workplace, and now they've arrested 250 workers and brutalized uh, the workers as well, uh, with sporadic uh, reports uh, coming through. It would require a unified a uh, uh, unified uh, working class under a uh, revolutionary program to begin uh, a general strike. In ice, any isolated strikes would mean uh, repression. And this leaves the youth in a very difficult situation because the youth cannot overthrow the Islamic Republic. Uh, uh, this has been seen by all the previous failed uprisings and also because it's only the working class which can unite uh, the masses uh, across all ethnic lines unite women and men, uh, unite the poor, which do not only include the working class, but also a section of the petty bourgeoisie, the bazaaris uh, and the poor farmers. Uh, and the workers can do this through a program which unites all the oppressed layers in society against the oppressors, that being the Iranian capitalist class. And this reflects the workers' role in production as the one, the true lever in society, not a wheel turns, not a light bulb shines without the permission of the working class. And this also gives them the potential to truly be a threat to the regime, unlike uh, scattered youth protests. And this potential is both best seen in the question of a general strike. Because a general strike would completely overwhelm the regime. They would be completely impotent to, uh, to repress it. And there is an example which is in very, uh, which is uh, the Iranian masses are quite conscious of, that being the Iranian Revolution 1979, uh, which in reality began in 1978. Because the Iranian Revolution, unlike the bourgeois propaganda in both in West and in Iran, uh, was a workers' movement largely. Uh, it began much like the current movement as a youth movement in, uh, in the spring of 1978. This youth movement reached its peak in September 1978. Uh, already there were signs of sporadic strikes by the workers coming in support of the youth. Uh, uh, and uh, in Tehran, this movement accu uh, accumulated to a massive protest in a square called Jale Square. The Shah, the then uh, dictator of Iran, uh, backed by the Americans, ordered uh, to shoot into the crowd in, uh, assembled in the square. This became the spark for a general strike and the be true beginning of the Iranian uh, revolution. Uh, the strike began in Tehran's oil refinery and then spread to the entire oil sector and then uh, within, a, uh, within a month to the entire Iranian economy. Uh, faced with such a mass movement, millions of workers and youths in the streets, the Shah was, uh, the security forces were completely impotent. In fact, they, the, the army and security forces started handing over their weapons to the masses uh, and joining the revolutionary movement. What was left of the Shah's um, uh, security forces was forced to be to hide in barracks because their generals were fearful that the whole state would just liquidate. The Shah in, uh, in January fled uh, the country. Uh, and the workers had set up through the general strike workers' councils, or shuras in Persian, in neighborhoods and factories. Um, uh, and, the, and the working class were the true power in society, a situation of dual power had, uh, had formed. And had uh, the Communist Party to their not, seized, uh, uh, not given support to Khomeini, uh, we would have seen a socialist revolution in it, Iran. The youth in Iran are very conscious of this potential and this example. And that is why uh, multiple uh, 
uh, university groups, groups akin to the Marxist societies nearly, uh, have made statements in that effect. For example, the Isfahan University students write the following, only with nationwide uh, general, uh, with a nationwide general strike, will the protesters in the street feel supported? When the strikes reach the industrial mother, uh, uh, mother centers of labor and transportation, the wheels of repression of the government will practically cease to work. But it's quite easy to say, all we need is a general strike, like the Iranian revolution. It's a completely different thing to implement that. There is enormous sympathy among the youth, among the workers, to the, work, uh, to the youth movement. The problem is they lack any form of organizations to uh, link up to the youth, um, and lack a program which would unite, a common program which would unite the students and the workers. It's only on this basis this sympathy can turn to some, uh, to, uh, this potential can be turned to some form of reality to turn uh, the demand of a general strike. And the other question is the few militant uh, trade unions I have listed, they are in fact not, they don't represent a majority of the Iranian working class at all. A uh, majority of uh, the support of the workers remains passive at best. And this is a big difference from the situation in 1978, when, especially in the oil industry, there existed communist networks, uh, tr uh, trade union cadres, who have existed since the, oh, since the beginning of the post-war period, uh, working underground, which played a leading role in the spreading of the general strike in, in 1978. But we are already seeing that in the vacuum of such a leadership, uh, there's uh, instinctively the youth and the workers are spontaneously uniting. For example, right now in Tehran University, uh, the students are putting forward the slogan, uh, uh, workers and students unite, uh, we are the children of the workers, uh, we have a common interest to uh, overthrow the regime. Um, uh, oh, uh, and th this has continued, gone furthest in the, in the Kurdish province of Iran, where we've seen waves of general strikes uh, starting in the bazaars, but now even included industrial uh, workers. But isolated to a single province, the regime has created a situation akin to civil war, uh, to, a, to a war uh, in, uh, in, the, uh, in Kurdistan, uh, sending uh, ar uh, heavily armed military grade equipment uh, with the security forces. Um, uh, uh, Isolated, the, the, an isolated general strike wouldn't be able to overthrow the Islamic Republic. Um, and, cons uh, and, and this is the same thing with seeing with small isolated sector strikes in specific sectors. And parallel to this, we've seen a number of economic strikes which are continuing. And all this emphasizes the need of a political uh, program to unite the masses. And the youth aren't passive observers in this process, uh, and the mass is not uh, at all either. Instead, they're not taking a defeatist character, uh, they're not taking a defeatist position. They see all the obstacles and are quite honest uh, with them, and, but have taken up the task to organize uh, for a general strike. Since uh, the end of September, we saw reports on social media calling for a general strike from various youth groups. Uh, and since, uh, and now this is becoming a dominant from every single uh, university group and every group of protesters uh, calling for a general strike. Not only on social media, because the regime constantly turns off internet connection, but even, uh, but, uh, even producing flyers to be distributed on cars, to be distributed across uh, society. Um, Oh, uh, and the most militant of these being various communist groups which have developed uh, out of the class struggle. Among them, many university groups, which were uh, which formed as well, university study circles, basically, and now have turned themselves into agitational groups. Uh, in Kurdistan, the youth have organized revolutionary youth committees uh, in various cities. Uh, and, uh, and even now, there are reports from two days ago where the students of Isfahan uh, and Tabriz University, along with two revolutionary uh, youth councils, have made a, sta a united statement for protests tonight and for calling for, a, uh, for agitating for a general <laughs> strike. And there are many more such groups that we're simply unaware. And I would like to quote one of these groups, the revolutionary communists of Gilan, uh, and they say the following, um, the, task, the task of every communist is to build for a general strike, to talk to workers about the necessity of this revolution. 
uh, and that we need a general strike for its success, and that without it, everything else will be in vain. Some, uh, mainly these communist groups, have even gone further, uh, basing themselves on the experience of the Iranian revolution uh, uh, with the formation of these workers' councils and our calling for workers' councils. For example, in the, in the Kurdish city of Sorry, my, my Kurdish isn't the best. San Anjan, they say they made an, the following appeal to all Iranian workers and youths. Now it is a time to create neighborhood committees and councils, student councils in universities, universities and school student councils in high schools. Our call for councils is, is though more widespread. It's to be spread in every layer of society in the workplaces and every other aspect of life. And then they explain further that it's only through the creation of these councils that we will be able to unite the scattered struggles of the youth to become a more coordinated and more planned uh, struggle against the entire regime. These, the, the immediate effect will be giving a sense of order and unity uh, and confidence to the street fighters and will be the first steps in building definite, uh, a definite leadership to create trust in the different layers to join the youth and the movement. And they go even further, calling for the creation of revolutionary cells in those cities where there is heavy repression and the street protests have temporarily uh, 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 been, uh, have gone down. And this is completely correct. It's only on this basis that the organizational basis for actually agitating for a general strike, winning over further layers of society, and actually solving the, the, the biggest problem in this movement, the question of leadership, which is prolonging the entire uh, revolutionary process that we are witnessing uh, in Iran. But all the while, uh, the Iranian youths and revolutionaries are trying to solve the important question of leadership. The imperialists have begun, uh, along with their, uh, the former monarchy of Iran, a campaign uh, feigning support to the mass movement in Iran. And this is, in fact, I would say, the biggest threat uh, to the development of uh, a revolutionary leadership. Uh, for uh, Reza Pahlavi, the, f the son of Iran's last Shah, uh, Mohammad Reza Shah Pahlavi, uh, has since the beginning of this ma mass movement uh, appeared on foreign-backed uh, Iranian media. Uh, outlets such as BBC Persian, uh, Iran International, which is financed by Saudi Arabia, uh, uh, and, and it's completely disgusting. He's constantly egging on strikes and protests as if he has anything in common. His family left Iran with $2 billion in the 1970s. He has nothing whatsoever in common with the Iranian working class. And his politics are equally reactionary. He's calling for unity between all Iranians and his mother and himself have uh, last week constantly gone on uh, oh, social media and news outlets calling for the uh, well, infamous revolutionary guard to defect and join the movement and that the masses do not want revenge. Uh, unity with such reactionaries, and even with, uh, and he continues to say, call for unity with the, with the Western democracies, what he means is with the imperialists, would doom the movement. Um, because the imperialists have nothing to offer the Iranian masses at all. Even in their own countries, the imperialists are, co co are constantly exploiting their own population. They only support uh, uh, through uh, media, through cutting their hair in parliament and feign support to Iranian women for their own self-interest, to enrich themselves, to replace the mullahs so they can enrich themselves on the Iranian working class. Uh, and it is simply to look at the conditions of barbarism they have created in the Middle East, propping up horrible dictatorships such as Saudi Arabia and the other Emirate states, or uh, the uh, Israeli state and its oppression of Palestinians. Uh, uh, and, all, uh, and all while they are stoking the flames of religious and ethnic uh, sectarianism, all in for the purpose for continuing their exploitation of the region. And it's no wonder the Iranian masses want nothing to do whatsoever with these reactionaries and don't see the imperialists as their salvation. And in Iran itself, the imperialists have a very dark history. 
Uh, during the Pahlavi regime, uh, the imperialists propped up his brutal dictatorship, uh, all while they were, the imperialists were exploiting the Iranian masses. Uh, they did this through a series of coups uh, by uh, financing and training the uh, Shah's infamous secret police, uh, Savak, which killed thousands and tortured them brutally. Uh, and uh, even after the fall of the, of the Shah regime, they've done everything possible to uh, see a return of a Western-friendly regime. Uh, including from supporting Saddam Hussein during the Iraq-Iran war, uh, uh, financially and militar militarily with intelligence, to the current sanctions in Iran, which have completely de devastated Iran's economy and given an excuse for the ruling class in Iran to unite the masses against this common threat. There are two sides of the uh, same rotten capitalist system. And, uh, and the propaganda of the Pahlavis uh, and the uh, imperialists is welcomed by the Islamic Republic because it is precisely ammunition for their own propaganda machine. The regime has been spinning constant conspiracies that this movement is supposedly the, led by monarchists, the children of uh, the Savak, the, the Charles secret police, uh, which is very strange, and separatists. Uh, this have no, has no basis whatsoever in reality. Um, but the Iranian, uh, uh, the Iranian masses are quite aware that, uh, uh, that uh, any form of imperialist intervention would not mean any form of improvement. But at the same time, we must not exaggerate the effect the imperialist uh, propaganda uh, has had in this movement. Uh, because the, uh, most Iranian masses aren't convinced that this movement is foreign-backed. Rather, they see, uh, they, see the, they, see the, they see the lack of an alternative uh, in the movement, the lack of a clear leadership, means that it, is po it leaves the threat of a foreign intervention and a foreign-backed regime in the future. Uh, but the youth and the movement have largely completely uh, denounced uh, foreign uh, imperialism. One of the most popular slogans, uh, which is also being put forward today, is death to the tyrants whether they be the Shah or the supreme leader, completely rejecting uh, the Shah and the Pahlavis, and a series of statements by the students explaining that they are completely disgusted how uh, Western-backed media has suppressed the slogan, which is growing, is growing in dominance. The militant workers of Haftapeh have uh, even gone further, explaining very clearly that they, have, that, that they are disgusted uh, by the Americans' feigned support to the movement in Iran. They say, and I'm paraphrasing, who asked you for our support? We know that we want no support from any corrupt government, whether that be the US, Europe, or, uh, or any other dirty government in the world. Uh, we know that you are only wanting to pursue uh, the same anti-labor legislation uh, than the Islamic Republic. How will that help Iranian workers? How will that be better for, uh, uh, for us? Uh, and it's precisely, uh, this shows a, 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 a enormous consciousness, but these are unfortunately still not, there is no clear program, no clear organization to put forward to convince the masses that this is the case. Unfortunately, uh, there are those socialists here in Europe mainly who say this movement is not progressive, who uh, uh, this is even a color revolution, honestly repeating the lies of the Islamic uh, Republic, uh, that this, uh, uh, this is a Western back movement from the beginning. Uh, and for support for this, they point at, oh, but the slogans aren't socialist. They are democratic slogans against dictatorship. Uh, they aren't socialist slogans. Uh, and uh, while that is true, uh, that is true, but they do not see actually in what direction the movement is actually developing towards. Uh, and arguably, I would say, are very much influenced by the reporting of their own media, of the bourgeois media in their own home countries, rather than the actual movement ongoing in Iran. They can't see below the surface of what the actual movement of the Iranian masses is. And we also must not forget, no revolution has ever begun with a perfect communist program. Uh, it began with anti-war demands, uh, which led inevitably for economic demands linked to the uh, war and the exploitation of the Russian working class, which eventually led the Russian workers to the conclusion that Tsardom in its entirety must, uh, must be removed. But when the Tsar abdicated, was overthrown, it became more and more clear that none of their demands could be uh, realized without the abolishment not only of the Tsar, but the entire Russian ruling class. 
And it was precisely the Bolsheviks, which were the key in, uh, in that's the catalyst of this process, uh, which went from a minority to a majority, winning over the majority of the working class. And this is precisely what we need in Iran, a Bolshevik program uh, and a Bolsheviks in Iran. Uh, um, uh, we need a clear minimum program. And the workers of Haftapeh have put forward a minimum program, uh, which I think very well summarizes the demands of the Iranian uh, working class and poor. And they say the following, we demand complete freedom, the freedom of speech, expression, association for trade unions and political parties and free elections. We also demand the immediate establishment of a minimum wage corresponding to 23 million tomans, full social insurance and pensions that are suitable for all men and women in society. On this basis, and developing this program further, if the youth and work and the militant trade unions would campaign, they could rapidly lay the foundation for a general strike. Uh, but the Haftape workers continue with a maximum program uh, calling, uh, calling for uh, the establishment of uh, uh, shuras or workers' councils, and that th there should be no power uh, above these workers' councils, and society should be run by workers' control. Um, and the Haftape workers, which are honestly a bit of an anomaly, uh, they've been a very militant trade union for many years, um, uh, and are, uh, are clearly influenced by the ideas of the Iranian revolution. But they're not alone. There are many more. Many of the other revolutionary student groups uh, and youth groups I have mentioned have a very similar slogan, calling for Idare Shura, uh, for a Soviet uh, or a council government. Uh, and, but the role of the communists is to link this demand, the demand for workers' control, for workers, for socialism, to the de minimum demands, to explain that none of the demands of the masses would be able to be implemented on the basis of capitalism, uh, neither the democratic or the economic demands. And this lies in the heart of the question. Uh, Iranian capitalism is at a dead end. Uh, the minimum demands I have mentioned uh, would not be would be impossible to implement in Iran, uh, uh, as they are honestly growingly impossible to attain to uh, uh, to attain in the imperialist countries, where we are seeing constant counter reforms, uh, and this is especially in the in face of the crisis of capitalism uh, around the whole world. But does that that does not mean that the Iranian workers must simply accept what they are. They must link their the duty of commerce is to link these minimum demands to the wider struggle for the struggle of socialism in Iran and in, around the whole world. And this is because Iran the reason why these demands would not be possible was because Iran remains a largely underdeveloped country. Um, because of how capitalism developed in Iran. Uh, it developed mainly through the investments of the imperialists in the oil sector, with the rest of the economy remaining rather underdeveloped. Uh, and this would mean, this has meant that Iranian capitalism has been a, only able to keep its compa itself competitive by the most brutal exploitation of, the, of its working class. And this is not only true for the economic demands, this is equally true for the, for the democratic demands of the masses. Uh, for, in reality, bourgeois democracy is a preferable way for the ruling class to rule. It's a good way to, remove, uh, to avoid violent clashes between the classes and instead find some form of compromise. The problem is, Iran does not have the material basis to give those reforms, to create those illusions. Iran has had many periods of short-lived bourgeois democracy, such as the late 1940s and early 1950s. But what did the workers use this uh, freedom for? They very rapidly organized trade unions uh, led by communists, uh, workers' parties led by communists with demands which were outside of the, what was possible within Iranian capitalism. And the answer of the uh, Iranian capitalism has, uh, has always been coups, repression, and uh, repression to, uh, from one dictatorship to another. And this shows the absolute dead end of Iranian capitalism, not only now, but the, for the last century. Go, the Iranian masses have gone from one bloody dictatorship to another bloody dictatorship. And we must be very clear, it makes no difference if uh, Iran's ruling class wears a crown or wears a turban. They are the same rotten imperialist, ca uh, rotten capitalist class. Uh, and our task as Marxists is very clear. Uh, 
Our t like everywhere in the world, our task is to build a revolutionary leadership here in the UK and everywhere around the world. We often in the IMT talk about the crisis of leadership, the need of a revolutionary party. The current movement in Iran emphasizes what that actually means. I often feel very abstract when we talk about it. It's very clear. The hundreds who have been killed, the thousands who have been in imprisoned, and many who are being tortured, that is the fault not of the masses in any way who are doing everything to uh, build, uh, for the build and unite for a common struggle against this rotten system, but it is the weakness of Marxism. Uh, and it is only through building our forces that such tragedies uh, uh, can be stopped of happening. Iran is not the only country which has gone through revolutions without Marxists. Majority of revolutions, unfortunately, fail because of the weakness of the forces of Marxism. And that's why I emphasize everyone who has not joined uh, Socialist Appeal and the IMT to do so. Uh, our historical task is to overthrow this rotten system in Iran and in uh, Britain and around the whole world. Um, uh, for had we in Iran right now had an organization of a few, only a few thousand, the situation uh, across the whole country, the situation in Iran would be completely uh, different. But the absence of that is now prolonging the entire revolutionary process and even goes so far that it threatens to actually that this movement could be crushed, that the youth and workers will not unite in time around common program, around common organizations, and that this movement can't continue inevitably. If the youth see that this movement leads to nothing but martyrs and imprisonment, of course they will eventually abandon it. Uh, uh, but it's too soon to say uh, if this movement is going to be defeated or not. But we have an important task here in the imperialist countries uh, uh, as Marxists and internationalists because it's only us and the wider European and Western labor movement which are the only true allies with the Iranian working class. And uh, through our class solidarity, we must be very clear. We must unite our struggle against our own ruling class to the struggle against the Islamic Republic. We must say no to sanctions, no to any imperialist meddling in Iran. Uh, the, let the, the liberation of, uh, of, uh, of the Iranian working class and masses is a task for the Iranians alone. Um, uh, oh, uh, and un uh, united in this struggle, I, uh, we will ensure that we will live in a socialist society in the end of our lifetime. Thank you.